cutting one ear, the world leader in hydrogen technology. And you're pumping up our economy, you're making us cleaner at the same time. This is what I always said, that what is good for the environment also can be good for the economy. I want to congratulate all of you for the great actions that you take. You are the true action heroes. California now has, and I just would like to brag a little bit here, because I think it's time that we brag a little bit of all the things that we have accomplished. For instance, California has now 31 hydrogen cooling stations that are open all under construction, and they are popping up all over the place, almost on Main Street. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is one of the big visions that I had, big goals that I had, even though people thought I was crazy, but we went ahead. Near my home, for instance, there's now a shale station, it sells the usual three grades of gasoline, but it also has a hydrogen pump right there. And I went into the ribbon cutting of that uh, of opening ceremony. Normally, we don't go to ribbon cuttings, opening ceremonies, and fueling stations. But in this particular case, I made, a, I made an exception because of the hydrogen pump that was included in the, the gas station there. And it was a wonderful experience the different models of hydrogen powered cars that were standing in line there. Uh, and it was pretty great to see the new activities that are going on in that direction. It was truly amazing. California also has hundreds of hydrogen power cars and buses. Just last week, the city of Burbank began using the world's first plug-in hybrid hydrogen buses, which is a combination of different technologies all coming together. In California, many of you are already making hydrogen from wind and from solar power and from farm and municipal waste. You're even testing home fruits so that everyone can make transportation fruits in their own backyard. Of course, those that do will be laughing if the oil companies raise the price again and all of a sudden the price is four or five or six dollars a gallon. It will not have had any effect on those individuals. And hydrogen is modernizing the way that we use electricity. Like new energy, for instance, has created a new fuel cell that powers homes and buildings. This is really a wonderful development because the advantage there is that you don't even have to go to the grid. You have your fuel cell right next to your building. And of course, up in Silicon Valley, a lot of the buildings are already using this technology, and a lot of homes are using this technology. And now we are trying to do the same thing in government buildings. There will be many of the government buildings that will be soon powered by fuel cells. We want to be a perfect example. But all of this is just the beginning. We are proving that this technology is available and that they are marketable. We are doing this all together. This is one big family. We all have to do this together, but one person can do that. Now, back in 2004, I launched our hydrogen hybrid. The reason why we launched it here was because simply it was always the argument. What is first? Do we need to, be tired? Do we need to build a hydrogen highway, hydrogen cooling stations, or do we need first to build the cars? Car company, the companies always say, well, we're not going to build any hydrogen fuel cars if they're not fueling stations. So that's why we went ahead. We wanted to stop that argument. As we are building more and more fueling stations, we will have more and more cars become available. California set out to prove to the nation and to the world that hydrogen vehicles that are on the road and on our highways are safe and are affordable. We wanted California to be the place where it all happens, and it is happening right now. We're developing hydrogen communities in Santa Monica, Irvine, Torrance, Newport Beach, and Burbank will be added in 2013 and Los Angeles in 2014. Right now we're building state-sponsored stations in the Bay Area and in Los Angeles and in Orange County. And by 2017, we expect to have 45,000 hydrogen cars on the road here in California. Now this is all, uh, 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 of course, very important, even though it starts small. But think about it. Have you ever seen a great movement, a worldwide movement that did not start on the grassroots level? Everything starts small, and then it starts booming and growing and mushrooming, and then it goes statewide, nationwide, and eventually worldwide. And this is exactly what we're seeing here also. I love seeing the innovation in the vehicles. This is exactly what I envision. When I challenged Detroit uh, uh, to, to, to think outside the box and not just to produce the same things over and over. Now, of course, at the beginning, they were very resistant. And you saw what happened to Detroit because they were very resistant and because they did not develop alternative fuel 
vehicles quick enough. All of a sudden, they had to be bailed out by the government because they were not competitive anymore. And this is why I had my big kind of debate with them already back in 2000. Before I became governor, I said to the company that bought the franchise of Hummer, I said, you got to build the Hummer, the H2, H3, and H4 with hydrogen fuel engines. Because then the whole argument is off the table that it's a fuel gas gasoline cars. I said, then you are powered by hydrogen with zero emissions. And the argument will be gone. And you would have the greatest car in the world, the greatest SUV. They said it would take eight years. I said, why don't you start working on it now? They said, if you wait until tomorrow, it's one day longer. Start working on it now. Well, in 2008, I called them. They still were not ready yet, but now they are getting ready. If you see the technology developing, we see the alternative fuel vehicles now coming out of Detroit also. Finally, they are learning. And this is why it is so important that we all work together. And I said I wanted to see California. California to have vehicles powered by our most promising technologies. Now, we don't pick winners. We don't do that. We don't care if it is biofuel, vegetable oil, natural gas, battery, uh, electric, or if it is hydrogen cars. As long as we stop relying on fossil fuel, as long as we get off fossil fuel, which is coming from foreign countries that hate us, that despise us. is the most abundant element in the universe. We can have it forever. We have already come a long way, of course, but we know that we still have a lot of work ahead of us. But it's wonderful work. It's exciting. It is really wonderful to work on something that you believe in. That includes, of course, uh, waking up the federal government. If you think about that, you've got to wake up the federal government. I mean, here we have an energy secretary who is a bright guy, who is Californian, by the way, is a great leader, but he's not as enthusiastic about what we are doing. So I think 